This is a Free Thinking Island out of the studio episode. And in this episode, Free Thinking Island got to meet the passionate Leo Igwe. Free Thinking Island does get out of the studio from time to time as seen with the Black Hole Secular Rally. And in this episode, we managed to attend a talk by Leo Igwe, hosted by the Harlem Humanists at the New York Society for Ethical Culture in Midtown Manhattan. This is Leo Igwe, a Nigerian human rights and child advocate and humanist. Igwe is a former Western and Southern African representative of the International Humanist and Ethical Union and has specialized in campaigning against and documenting the impacts of child witchcraft accusations. Yes, child witchcraft accusations. His human rights field work has led to his arrest on several occasions in Nigeria. Nonetheless, Igwe has held leadership roles in the Nigerian Humanist Movement, Atheist Alliance International, and the Center for Inquiry, Nigeria. In 2012, Igwe was appointed as a research fellow of the James Randi Educational Foundation, where he continues working towards the goal of responding to what he sees as the negative effects of superstition, and hopefully advancing skepticism throughout Africa and around the world. On Leo's short trip to New York City, he wanted to share with us the impact that superstition and religious hysteria has on Africa, from the likes of person like Helen Upabio and the witch tests that harken back to the Middle Ages. We at Free Thinking Island are always excited and interested in persons championing rationality, and we were happy to have had the opportunity to be able to speak with Leo and ask him a few questions. We were also able to listen to his indelible struggle and the almost uphill battle to educate and shed light on practices that need to be eradicated in order for people to be truly free. However, this is easier said than done because back in July of 2009, Leo was scheduled to speak at a meeting in Calabar, Nigeria, condemning the abandonment, torture, and killing of children alleged to be witches. As he was about to deliver his speech, Members of the Liberty Gospel Church, more than 150 people, invaded the meeting and attacked Igwe. Believe it or not, members of this church beat and robbed Igwe, relieving him of his money, his camera, and his mobile phone. He, however, managed to escape to a nearby police station to seek help. This is what Leo is up against. This is a snapshot of Leo Igwe, humanist, human rights advocate, and a very passionate individual. This is Free Thinking Island, out of the studio. Um, what, I wanted to put what you do in light of a secular, skeptical, and can I say, scientific approach to being in the world and solving problems. How would you frame what you are doing in a secular, skeptical, and scientific way? There are problems people encounter in my society that are informed by, the, by believing in the supernatural. By religious belief, people are driven to commit atrocities because they have this belief that there is some spirit somewhere. There are some beings somewhere you cannot see, you cannot, um, you cannot touch. You cannot even interact with it except maybe themselves, you know. So, and um, it's causing a lot of problems. This belief is causing a lot of problems that you ask yourself, why? You, you, you ask questions. And you try to find out why people should inflict harm, why people should torture and maltreat their children, their parents. Just because of some belief, you cannot even verify. You can't provide evidence for it. The person goes to a church where there is a pastor, and a pastor will be saying, the witches and wizards in your home, they are responsible for your problems. And you go home and you start looking for the witches and wizards. And you know where you are looking, you always find. So, we have a whole lot of 
social problems informed by the fact that people entertain supernatural, superstitious beliefs. And that is why a secular, science-oriented approach to addressing this problem, I consider is very important, if I consider it an imperative. In your manifesto for a skeptical Africa, is that, that leads me into this question now. I like the fact that you mentioned the darkness before the dawn, and you liken Africa now to the period in Europe's Middle Ages, that dark period in Europe's Middle Ages. And you have hope for the continent to find its own age of enlightenment, such as, you know, what happened again in Europe. Are you optimistic about the rays of enlightenment peaking over Africa's horizon? Are you optimistic about making some changes, see changes, see some rays? So I, that, that was why I used that uh, terminology or something, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, the dawn, you know, uh, uh, after the dusk, I think, you have the dawn, you know, after the darkness, you have light or something like that. Okay, good. You know, because there's always a tendency that people will tell you, oh, you're wasting your time. Oh, you're going against... In fact, some people you ask, used to ask me, you, how many are you? How many skeptics do you have in the whole of Africa? So what do you think you can do? You get it? So people try to sometimes demoralize you. And you ask yourself, okay, well, they're, they're just your us. So you want us to still keep living in a society where you will see people, you know, soliloquizing, or babbling in meaningless tongues and saying that they are speaking heavenly language. Where you see people, you know, deceiving themselves, telling you, you know, you go to a witch doctor, a witch doctor will be staring at cowries and he will say that these are gods. And you tell him, look, 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 these are not gods, these are pieces of stone and rocks. Tell us these are stone. How can rocks be gods? And the person will be saying it with a very serious face. And I don't know whether he expects you to get give him money. Money for what? Look at it. And people are buying cars because charlatans, you know, whether they are witch doctors, they are priests, they are pastors, they are sheikhs, they are imams, all of them, they will be standing at the open air, they will be doing it as if they are saying something. And you ask a person, do you have some psychological problem? Or do you need some glasses? Do you need the attention of a, an optician? Because you, you maybe there are some illusions. So, you know, you get tired. You know, of living in such an environment, so that at a point, you know, you have to speak out. So what I'm saying is this: we can't, we can't, we can't keep living under that kind of regime. And I am inspired by the history, let's say, of Europe, because if you read about the witch hunting in Europe, you will think, oh, this will not end. It ended. And so I'm encouraged because it ended. In, 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 they had the experience it in Europe. It ended. It has not ended completely. I must tell you. Because the Pope is still there, you know, representing God and all that and all that and saying all sorts of things. But I'm sure that within the context we're talking about, which hunting they say ended. If it could end with all the atrocities they committed, it could also end here. Because it is just human. It's all about human being maybe uh, coming up with a way to explain things, which later they found to be mistaken, and they have to correct it. So we, we, have, we are making that mistake now. We can also correct it. And that is why I said, I don't know it all. This darkness, after this darkness, we'll get the light. That is, that's why, that's why I, I use that analogy. What do you say to people that say, well, this is their culture. We can't or shouldn't intervene or do anything. You know, this is, this is what they do there. Leave them alone. This is the culture. Step aside. Don't try to influence these people and change their way. Which are probably ancient. First of all, when you say it's our culture, whose culture? Yes. Whose culture first? They will tell you sometimes they say it's African culture. African culture has no meaning. Africans, you are, you, okay, when you talk about Africa now, you talk about you, you talk about something that includes not Africans, isn't it? Okay, you say, oh, sub-Saharan African culture. We are, we are not saying anything. And that's the problem I have with many anthropologists and the scholars and all that. They will just come and say, they are Zang, they are that. Their house has this. The evil is that. I mean, you just, millions of people, you just put them in, in a box of cultural belief and practice. That is, it, it doesn't have credibility at all. Yeah. Even we know, you get it, I don't, for instance, I was brought up a Catholic, okay? I know that 
Some people are Catholics, but they don't believe in virgin man. No, they don't. They, they just take it. You know. Some people are Catholics, they didn't believe in purgatory, you know. But you know, they will come out and say, oh, according to we Catholics, including those who don't share the same Catholic thing with you. So that's a problem. So we the, this is our frameworks, this, this is our weapon, this is our tools. So that they want to use to push the platform. They will tell you, oh, it's part of our culture. Whose culture? You get it? That's the question. Again, cultures change. Yes, cultures are dynamic. I learned in school that cultures are dynamic. In other words, they change. They take certain things, they give out certain things. You know. So when they say it's our culture, they want they want that thing to, you know, they want you to keep holding on to it. So it is important to remind them that things change. I used to tell them in the north of Ghana, I said, look, the way you dress today is not part of your culture. Yes. My grandfather didn't dress this way. If you, if my grandfather or if my grandfather were to walk in here in his normal attire, many of you would call the cops. We call the police. <laughs> <laughs> so, but all of a sudden, somebody will come and tell me that what my father, what my grandfather did is our culture. Meanwhile, the person is not even dressed the way my grandfather was dressed. So, it's a whole lot of, you know, there's a whole lot of uh, the kind of what do I have? I put it, you know. People are just using it, you know, to push a platform. You know, it's, it's a vague concept, it's a vague expression, and it doesn't communicate anything. Yes. It makes our work difficult because, like now, um, we, I organized a program in, um, in, in Calabar, in southern Nigeria, and, um, and you know, a witch hunter, Helen Obadio, she sent some of her church members. This is Helen Upobia. She has many dubious claims to fame, but most popular is her literal interpretation of, you guessed it, the Bible, and her belief that Satan manifests himself in the bodies of children. I recommend watching Saving Africa's Witch Children to see what garbage this woman is all about. They came and disrupted the event. Of course, they beat me up and they stole my things. You know, I left them. I didn't do anything. They asked me to go to court. I refused because I didn't have money. Yes. So because going to court is a lot of money. And I had around four or five civil cases again, you know, at that same time going on. So I left her and went home. And all of a sudden, she now sued me to court. She took me to court that I should pay her money to compensate her for denying her her rights to believe in witchcraft and all that, blah, blah, blah. Um, what I have just shown you now, that's a, a witch trial. That's how to try a witch. The first person was innocent, the second person was guilty. So it just happened, I think, that was at that first week of January or late in December. And uh, I had the opportunity of meeting the young guy, you know, who did that. So the two brooms are what you used to catch the witch. Now, the belief is that it's not the guy that catches the witch. It's not that guy jumping up and doing things like that catches the witch. The gods. And that's the problem. You get it? So, if they put the broom, they dip it inside their sacred water or holy water, they put it across your leg and pull it back. If the brooms they don't stick together, they put brooms without bomb, without a broom sticking together with water, you know? So, so, if they don't stick together, then the person is. Um, he said to be innocent, but if they, if they stick together, they put, then the person is with, just like you have seen. This here is the infamous Helen Pavio, and right here is an exorcism of some sort, or some sort of witch trial. These things still happening in Africa in the 21st century. When we are talking about witchcraft, some people should not just think, oh yeah, it's an African problem. You know, when you say it's an African problem, it means that the problem that keep, you know, it, it remains there and the life, the war can continue. It's an African problem. It could become your problem. In UK today, they are facing the problem of witchcraft-related killings and abuses. Because they think that, oh, we have, we have passed that stage. You know, they have, we have not. Because the world has gone global. Like now, my friend in court, Helen Obama, she has built her ministry on witchcraft accusations. She said she's an ex-witch and that she could, you know, uh, exercise 
anybody. And she associates truancy, disobedience, breaking cops, uh, whatever, talking in the dream, and all sorts of things, all sorts of things that we manifest as human beings or as, as kids. That's what she associates with witchcraft. And she says, bring those children to me, I will exercise them. And that's how she's building her ministry. So they hate people demanding for change. So whenever we are demanding for change in a society, we should know that there are forces who want the status quo to remain. And these forces use their propaganda tools to make people believe that the status quo is the best for the society. That's the argument. So it's not like when you want to change, you think that everybody will just say, okay, you, you can come in, go ahead, get it done. No. You will face resistance, you will face opposition. What if we are changing? What are we changing? Yes, it is we who invest them with content and significance. It is we, human beings, who transform ideals into tools, instruments, mechanisms for social change and transformation. And it is in forums like this that we articulate and can articulate these values with force and persuasion and cause people to answer the call to duty. The duty to change the society and the call to become agents of that change we want, we desire and we expect. This is a call for us to take our destiny in our hands. But more importantly, this is a call for us to guard our destiny, to shape and reshape it. You know what? Many people think it is enough to just say and claim that we have taken our destiny in our hands. So they relax and allow their destinies to slip away. And many people do not know that it is not enough to take our destiny in our hands. We also have to be vigilant and guard our destiny jealously. And more importantly, we need to embark on the constant project of shaping and reshaping our destinies in line with new knowledge and ideas. So that is why we need spaces like this to freely examine, inquire, question, and challenge those ideologies, mentalities, faith, beliefs, traditions, revelations, sacred or secular texts, attitudes and dispositions that limit our possibilities and hamper the progressive emancipation of our humanity. We need this forum to discuss and debate how to remove those obstacles to our social cultural and moral progress. Friends, let's make no mistake about this. Achieving social change and renewal does not come easy. So these insights have inspired me over the years as I work and campaign for human rights in my country, Nigeria, and throughout the region. Friends, those who have vested interest in perversive criminality and illegality are opposed to change. Those who have their political, traditional, religious power base on witch hunting are against any efforts to eradicate this cultural scourge. When you see people openly dash their hope for change and progress or allow the destiny which people have formed over the years and die to take in their hands, just slip away. Me, you feel bad. Like now we're talking about, oh, after the dusk, after the dark comes, the light comes, the dawn, when? Some people will ask you. When people are still associating malaria with witchcraft, when are these people going to come on? So there's, there's sometimes there's a tendency to despair. But you know what? I'm constantly renewed and reinvigorated. Particularly, when I consider that social change does not come easy, social change has a price. And that has to be paid by some people before it happens. They say it goes this way. If there is no struggle, there's no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation are men who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the, without the lawful roar of its many waters. This struggle may be a moral one, it may also be a physical one. It may be both moral and physical. But friends, it must be a struggle. It must be a struggle at 
take classes. Thank you.